Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and welcome to the AP Biology Lab 1 walkthrough. This lab is on two things. It's on diffusion and osmosis. In the diffusion portion of this lab, we're actually just going to do a demonstration. In the osmosis lab, we'll do the potato lab. So we're going to put potatoes in different concentrations of sugar water. But let me quickly define what diffusion and osmosis are. Diffusion is going to be movement of, of molecules from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So if I were to remove this lid on the top of the perfume, the perfume molecules molecules are going to move from an area of high concentration inside the bottle to low concentration in the air. And so pretty soon you'd be able to smell that perfume just due to diffusion. Uh, now osmosis is a specific type of diffusion. It's movement of water. And so we're going to study that in this lab using potatoes and sugar water. And so let me go into a little more depth on those two processes. First one is diffusion. Diffusion is best, a uh, best example would be right here. Let's say we have this jar and this jar is separated in the middle using a membrane. And that membrane is porous. In other words, it allows material to move back and forth. Well, if I were to let it here, sit here at time zero and come back at time 15 minutes, what we're going to find is that on this side we have sugar water. On this side we could have less sugar water or almost distilled water on this side. If we let it sit for 15 minutes, however, those sugar molecules are going to start to migrate over here onto this side. And so when we come back, it's going to be an equal concentration of sugar on either side. Now the water would have also been flowing, but the water and the sugar are going to move back and forth, and it's essentially going to be isotonic on either side of that membrane. That's diffusion. It's simply movement of molecules from an area of high to an area of low concentration. Now osmosis is a specific type of diffusion. It's the movement of only water across a semi-permeable membrane. So how does that work? Well, let's say we have the same setup different container, but it's got semi-permeable de membrane down the middle. This only allows the movement of water, but it doesn't allow the movement of those solute molecules. Well, you can see right here that this side over here is going to be hypertonic. In other words, it has more solute on that side and less water. This side over here is going to be hypotonic. And so if we let it sit now for another 15 minutes, it's going to magically raise on this side. And the reason why is that water is going to flow from an area of high water concentration to low water concentration. Now why isn't the sugar molecules moving? It's because they can't move through that membrane. And so this would be osmosis. It would be the flow of water across a semi-permeable membrane. Um, and so we'll see how that plays out in just a second. And so the first part of this lab is the diffusion lab. Uh, in this diffusion lab, we're going to do essentially a quick demonstration. And so to do this, you're going to use um, dialysis tubing. So we're going to have dialysis tubing on this side. Dialysis tubing is a little bit of tubing that's used in uh, kidney dialysis. It's essentially, it looks just like uh, plastic, but it's going to have tiny little holes in it, tiny little pores in it that you can't see. And then we're going to have a beaker. Now in the beaker we're going to put water or H2O and then we're going to put a chemical called IKI. IKI essentially has iodine inside of it. So in the beaker all we got is water and IKI. Inside the dialysis tubing we're going to have water. We're going to have glucose. Glucose remember is a simple sugar. It's a monosaccharide so it's going to just have one sugar. We could test for the presence of glucose using something called test tape. We put it into the solution. We're going to find that there's going to be glucose inside there. Then we're going to have starch. Now starch is a polysaccharide. So instead of just one sugar molecule, it's going to be sometimes hundreds if not thousands of sugar molecules that are attached together. Starch is going to be that sugar that you find in stuff like pasta. And so inside here we've got um, water, starch, and glucose. Outside, no glucose. Now we're going to let it sit for, I do this during class, so we let it sit for about 40 minutes. Before I show you what happens, I should also remind you this. We can test for the presence of glucose using test tape, which is simply a little bit, almost looks like litmus paper. Litmus paper. But to test for the presence of starch, if IKI and starch are ever in the same place at the same time, it's going to turn this bluish color. So let's see what happens. An hour later, it's going to look like this. And so in class, I ask students to figure out, you know, wh what's going on? Why do we get this blue color on the inside? What has moved back and forth? And so basically, when we test it when it's done, we'll find that there's glucose again inside the dialysis tubing. Does it makes sense because it was there before. There's starch, there's water, but we can infer that IKI is moved inside. And how do we know that? Well, starch and IKI, if they're ever in the same place at the same time, we're going to get this blue color. On the outside, we could test and we'll find that there's the presence of glucose inside here. There's IKI like there was before. There's water, but there's no starch on the outside. How do we know there's no starch? Well, there's no blue color on the outside. And so we could figure out 
the size of all these molecules in relation to the sizes of the holes in the dialysis tubing. In other words, are the holes inside the dialysis tubing bigger than the IKI? For sure, because the IKI was able to move on the outside in. Are they bigger than the starch? No, because the starch is not able to make its way out. And so what we're showing here is diffusion. What's the one thing that we didn't talk about the movement of? That'd be water. In order to figure out if water's moving or not, we'd have to mass it before and mass it after and see if there's a change in mass. All right, let's get to the actual potato lab. In the potato lab, what you're going to do is you're going to core potatoes. So you're going to basically cut out a little core of a potato like that. We'll, we usually use about three of those inside there. And then you're going to put them into a beaker that's containing different amounts of sugar concentration. And so we're going to put it in distilled water, or zero molar, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0 molar. So this is a ton of sugar inside it. We're going to get the mass of them on day one, and then we're going to get the mass of them on day two. So this would be like the mass on day one. This is the mass on day two. And so if we think about osmosis and what's going on, well, in the distilled water, you can see here that on day one, the, the mass of those two potato cores is 4.74 grams. And then on day two, it's 6.14 grams. And so what's happening? Well, if you put the potatoes inside distilled water, they're gaining mass. Why are they gaining mass? It's due to osmosis. In other words, water is flowing in to the potatoes because it's moving from an area of high water concentration outside the potato to low water concentration on the inside or from hypotonic to hypertonic. If we look at the point two, the point two is also increasing mass. If we graph this out, but as we look at the point four, point six, point eight, and one point oh, we find that it's actually losing uh, mass. In other words, it's shriveling out. And why is that? Well, if we put it in real sugary water, high molarity water, what we're finding is that now the water, instead of moving into the potato, is actually moving from the potato out. And so you can see here that there's like a best fit line. If I were to draw it, I would put the best fit line somewhere like that. And so basically what you can figure out is that point at which this line crosses the axis that would be 0% change in mass. And so we can really figure out the molarity of potatoes. Because if you took a potato with a molarity of, I don't know what this is, like right around 0.3 molar, and we were to put it in 0.3 molar, it's going to have movement of water back and forth, but it's not going to relatively change its mass. And so that's the potato lab. That's diffusion. And I hope that's helpful.